Mark Henry back on the On Your Mark Show, 105.4 RPW, PeterPostRadio.com. Powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Repair, every play I compete. This is also on the On Your Mark YouTube channel. Got a very special guest today. We're going to talk a little boxing today. We're going to talk some training in the Fort Worth area, man. This guy is one of the uh, well-renowned fighters to come up out of the Fort Worth area, the DFW area. Uh, he was a champion before. And we're going to talk about what he's doing with his fighters. And he also has a business, Dream Performance, where he trains the everyday Joe like myself. We're going to bring in Kendrick Reller for my guy. Been knowing him for a long time, man, probably close to 10 years or so. And now we get down to sit down and talk a little bit about what he does and what he's bringing to the community here in the Fort Worth area. Coach, how you doing? Doing good, man. Having fun. Uh, so, I, I got to let everybody know, excuse my appearance. I know, you, I know you said it was all right, but I just finished sparring with my fighters and stuff, so excuse me. <laughs> oh, man, don't worry about that. You're putting in work and you're getting it in. Yeah. That's what we do here. We appreciate you joining us on the On Your Mark show. Now, Coach Relliford, tell us a little bit about where you come from, uh, you know, the sports you play, uh, mm -hmm. leading up to your boxing career and to what you're doing today. Okay. So, man, come up in Eastwood. Well, I'm not even going to say just Eastwood. I'm what I call the major boroughs of Fort Worth. Stop six, Eastwood, Forest Hill. Rolling Hills, a little bit everywhere, man. But uh, my family is originally from Eastwood. And uh, baseball was my first love. End up, yeah, uh, catching. Oh, yeah, your boy catch, right? No doubt, no doubt. Yeah. You know it. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, that, that was my first love, man. Baseball, then I ended up um, made the All-Star team pretty much every year I played. And then ended up breaking my arm my sophomore year of high school. And instead of having the knowledge to get surgery, you know how us black folks do. We are at a heel, at a heel, put some ice on it. Put some dirt on it. it. <laughs> put, there you go. And it never healed properly. And I never played baseball again. Wow. You know? Okay. Yeah. So that was, that was my sophomore year. And one thing I did know is, is I can fight. And the reason I was good at fighting is because even at 10 years old, I fought in Golden Gloves. So I was doing baseball and Golden Gloves, baseball, football, Golden Gloves, baseball, football, soccer, Golden Gloves. You know, so I was a pretty well-rounded athlete and then breaking my arm. So I knew boxing would be my ticket. You know what I'm saying? So after that, shoes, I graduated from ODY turned pro at 19 and the rest is history here i am today running dream performance now talk about dream performance a little bit before we okay. get into boxing uh i've been following this for a while you know we actually met when you were doing some other training by yourself uh, -huh. uh you know you worked for a couple of companies and you always seem to have a uh, a great rapport with the people that you were working with or trying to train them. So motivational, man. And we always had a talking relationship, uh, yeah. you know, outside of what we're doing today. Yeah, um, and always been motivational, so to speak. So give me a little bit about Dream Performance before we get into boxing. Okay. So I'm going to actually rewind a little bit further. So I was working where we met. I was working with Camp Gladiator. That's right. Yeah. So I was an independent contractor with Camp Gladiator and uh, coaching at Brewer Middle School and just an outdoor fitness company, you know. But one thing I know, I had that love of boxing. I knew that was going to be my baby to grow and lead to my kids. So after, you know, starting my own fitness company and branching off and joining another fitness company, I said, hey, what better way to build my own baby? You know what I'm saying? So after, you know, Camp Gladiator, I did that for six years. And here we go, Dream Performance. You know, at first it was Dream Performance Academy. And then we just took off the academy and ran with Dream Performance, me and my business partner, Corey. And then we had another business partner, James. Now, what is, tell us a little bit about Dream Performances, what oh, you yeah. guys do. Because okay. you don't just focus on one type of individual you get everybody. And you guys also, uh, you know, what's interesting, you have a summer camp for kids when they're out of school, 
Uh, you know, you have things that kids come by each, each week. And, you know, you've always been a mentor to kids in your own way uh, by taking them in, taking them to get something to eat. You even before you got to where you are now, you would take them running and working out in the park or just running down the street. You know, I've always followed you on social media and the things you did that way. Yes, sir. So Dream Performance, of course, is a uh, fitness studio. All right. Besides the boxing, we do group fitness, personal training, youth training. And the funny thing with that, our kids started five, four and five years old sometimes, you know, um, sports specific, specific training. Um, we bring in a yoga instructor. So dream performance is not just your average um, box gym. We are truly a well-rounded mentally, spiritually, and physically fitness program. Okay. So what we tell people is if you are looking for a way, uh, a quick fix, I want to lose weight, you know, 30 pounds in one day, this is not that type of gym. You know, we, we definitely believe in maintaining even when you're not working. You get what I'm saying? So we don't yes, want sir. you to, yeah, we don't want you to meet that goal of 30 pounds in one month. Then you take a week off, then you gain 15. You know, so before you can actually get ready physically, you mentally have to be ready. And the mental mindset is what we believe in. Most definitely. And a, a lot of people that are being uh, trained at Dream Performance, I see every week you guys are heavy on social media. Uh, you know, I think it's like Wednesday nights, definitely like Saturday mornings. You guys have a session where you guys kind of promote it out. Yeah. And you see all types from the best in shape people to the people that are just getting started. And all I think that, that all walks of life and, mm -hmm. you know, you, like you said before, you, it's not just a mental, but you guys touch the spirit. And uh, mm -hmm. I told you before that shout out to coach Corey Bronax from Texas. Yeah. Ice. talked to him last week and he yeah. is, is your business partner. And yeah. uh, he does a great job with those kids as well, man. Yeah. Shout out to coach Corey. Now let's yeah. dive into boxing a little bit. This all is right. your forte. This is what you yeah. do. Yes. Boxing, you know, the pugilist, you know, goes back to some of my favorite fighters, uh, you know, with uh, Thomas Hearns, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. Of course, Mike Tyson is an all-time favorite. Uh, you know, when I was coming up, you know, we gather around the TV just to watch anything about Mike Tyson. For you sure. were kind of in that area uh, of fighters. Uh, what yes, was sir. that like? What was that like to come up in that area? So this is the, the honest truth, man. I truly believe that my generation, I'm just 38, so we we in the same generation. We came up at the best time. We got the butt end of the 70s, the great spot of the 80s, and then the move on into the 90s. You know, so with me, I I was able to see Donald Curry. See, I was my dad was and my uncle were their main sparring partners. So I was able to grow up in the gym with them. So the gym was my babysitter. So I was fortunate enough to be able to grow and see what it used to be. And that has helped me shape what I wanted to be in the future. I wanted to get it back to what it used to be. Now, the Fort Worth area is famous, uh, you know, in the fighting circles. Uh, you know, you got Polly Ayala, you got yourself mm -hmm. uh, that had uh, ring experience, championship experience, fought all over the country. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and then I think the unique uh, deal about you and Ayala is you mentioned the amateur background. The Golden Gloves is here in Fort Worth. Yeah. How important is that to uh, your fighters and bringing that history and you're trying to bring it back now? So, man, listen, that Golden Glove history go way back. If anybody has ever been to the Golden Glove Youth Center, there's a wall of fame. That wall of fame goes back to 1915, 19 something like that. So it's very important to win a regional Golden Gloves, at the least to have your picture on that wall. You get what I'm saying? So yes, sir. the amateur of it is, is that's what's going to shape and mold you to how you're moving towards the future. So it's very important, very important. So, you, in, in other words, you're saying that, you know, in order to, to take the professional step, 
you need to have somewhat of a, 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 a amateur background. You can't just walk in off the street. You know, people think yeah. that they can fight, but there's really a whole different thing with boxing. You know, and I, I take the Floyd Mayweather and uh, uh, Conor McGregor type thing where, you know, Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather Jr. is a pugilist and pure in a sense. And, you know, Conor McGregor was more of a brawler. So the two kind of don't mix. And I think, yeah. you know, Floyd got the better of him being a pure boxer. For sure. He, again, come from that amateur background. Now, keep in mind, you know, McGregor did have some type of amateur background, but it wasn't extensive. And it, he didn't get the experience that a Mayweather had. So it's different from fighting 10 fights versus 110 and then taking it on and fighting 50 on a professional level. You get me? So that amateur program is definitely your foundation. And if your foundation isn't built on solid ground, you see how the cookie crumbles. No doubt. Again, this is, you know, this is what it is. And we're getting it from a professional and a coach and a student of the game and coach Kendrick, Relifer uh, from Dream Performance in mm -hmm. Fort Worth on the On Your Mark show, man. Now, Coach, what about the mental part of boxing? Because, you know, we see these guys training. Uh, when they're mm -hmm. training for a fight, they're all in. Uh, you know, there's road work. Uh, talk about the things that go into what a fighter is doing to get prepared for a particular fight. Gotcha. So besides, you know, your, um, and I don't want to say basic, but besides, Uh, besides, you know, hitting the bag, different things like that. You know, you'll just say an average day, you'll come in. And at, at the least, I want you to get at least 12 rounds in of quality bag work, speed work, mid work. You get what I'm saying? And now that cranks up to another level when I say, hey, we have a tournament coming up. Now, versus that 12, we pushing in 20. But it's not just a 20 I'm not big on quantity. I'm big on the quality of it. You get me? And that's in the gym. So like I say, your basic heavy bag work, your double end bag, your mitt, mitt work, um, your, your speed bag. Now we're going to take it outside, get your road work in, get your sprints in, do your, the extra stuff, your extra calisthenics, you know, yoga for some people, swimming for some people, you know. To me, your road work, that's where that mental come from because – is you versus you. And like I tell them, if you are walk while you're running, you're going to walk in that ring. That's the last place you need to be walking. You need to be on a steady pace, steady grind. You get me? So if you can defeat yourself while you're running miles, you'll defeat yourself from quitting when you get in that ring. So that mental is everything. Definitely. And it takes, uh, you know, a different mental state. Uh, you know, one of, like I said, Mike Tyson's one of the best fighters, pound for pound, one of my favorites. But I think that, you know, Mike Tyson's a very intelligent person that pe I think people don't understand his mental makeup. But when he gets ready for a fight and he turns that switch off, you know, he has to be that way out of the ring, in the ring. But out of the ring, one of the most intelligent people that you know. God. So th this is the funny thing with that, man, that you, that you mentioned that cutting that switch on. And I'm hope I'm answering your questions, right? Um, I got I had a chance to spar with Ken Shamrock, and yep. uh, MMA this, fighter. Yes, sir. This uh -huh. is when he he was doing the WWF, the right. uh, world's most dangerous man. Yes, sir. At the time, right. So I had a chance to spar with him, get in, shake his hand. You know how you doing, sir? And we get in there uh, for sparring, and man, I. I Got the wrong punch, and man, he just oh, I, and I'm like, what the heck going on? <laughs> but afterwards, hey man, good work, thank you for. I'm like, dude, I, this dude, what, what in the world was that? But I learned, <laughs> he learned, he taught me how to flip that switch. You are totally different from when you're in the ring versus when you're out. Just like you stated with Mike Tyson, there's a, a different persona that I have to take into that ring. To the to prepare myself for war because you are in a physical and mental spiritual war when you're in that square circle. You get what I'm saying? And once right. you get, yeah, once you get out, I don't have to, I don't have to, I can be back normal. 
I can be back human. No, Stephanie, I, I think that's with anything in life you get in certain situations. You know, if you can make it in a boxing ring, you can make it anywhere. For sure. And I think that's that's the things that boxers show. Now, I got a boxing enthusiast here, so I really got questions okay. about what is the best punch for boxing? Now, I look at boxers, sometimes they have a guy that's more of a jabber or, mm -hmm. or a guy that's more of a brawler or a guy that has a mix of both. Now, is that based on that style, you know, they got a soft paw and things like that. Is that based on the weight class and for different mm -hmm. fighting styles, or it just depends on what's more, you know, what's a better offensive or defensive fighter, things like that. that. Okay. So no matter the style or weight, anything, you have to have a jab. Okay. That that's going to, that is your most important punch period. Okay. If you, if you don't have a good jab, it's going to be hard to keep people off of. Okay. There's only, if I took your power hand away, you still got to have a good jab. You get what I'm saying? Now, the key is, is to make that jab just as strong as your power hand. Because you can keep them off with you. That's your measurement. That's your setup. You give them, everything works off that jab. Okay. You know, so I, I would say no matter the weight class, no matter the style, boxer, puncher, you got to have a good jab. Most definitely, man. And that, that breaks it down. I mean, I watch a lot of boxing and grew up watching boxing. And that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, now that puts it full circle for, for the average viewer, that you see mm -hmm. them setting up that jab and then they come off of that with a hook or an yeah. uppercut. Or, you know, based on the situation and mm -hmm. how much film study goes into preparing for an opponent. Okay. So as an amateur, it's kind of hard because you, it, unless it's pre-match, you really never know who you're going to fight. I mean, you can always, you know, look up YouTube different fighters, but you might not even fight that guy. Now, as a professional, you know, is set who you fighting, his tendencies, what he does off of certain situations is much easier to film study then. And at that point, it it's you have to be a student of the game. You get what I'm saying? You know, learning and knowing if he throw a jab, he always retreat back to his left. Throw a jab, retreat back to his left. Cool. Now I'm going to slip and come back with my cross so he can run right into my cross. You get what I'm saying? So right. film study is definitely important. At least now, I so. Well, definitely. I, I I know that, you know, any like any other sport, you know, I, that goes into it. You know, and, mm -hmm. you know, football is my background. And, you know, you have to study the opponent each week. You know, you got a scouting report based on yeah. the offense's tendencies if you're a defensive player vice versa for the offense. So, you know, I would think that boxers do professional study that as well. Mm -hmm. Now, we talked about you sparring and getting a lot of sparring hours yeah. in. How do you go about sparring? How do you set that up? Um, do you base that off of the film? Or do you mm -hmm. just try to work to get so many rounds? Are you preparing to go later rounds, depending on the tendencies, this, the you know, that the fighter that you're working uh -huh. with? Okay. So, uh, again, that go back to your amateur and your pros. So okay. no matter the rounds, whether I'm, am, whether I'm fighting an amateur or a pro, I'm working towards my style or the, the style of that fighter, right? Some guys, some amateurs, it's hard for them to get up quick for three rounds. So sometimes we might have to warm up a little bit longer for them to get in that fight and be good to go. Some guys warm up. As a pro, some of them warm up and get stronger as the rounds go further. So it, it, it's a lot of different tricks to it. But just as a basic, we're working a, a certain amount of rounds. And I always say at least four, but we're working on our own tendencies doing that four rounds. So we can be ready for anybody. So we're trying to perfect our own craft. You get what I'm saying? Now, right, right. If we, if we do have a fight set for a specific opponent, now I'm bringing in different fighters um, to mimic those opponents. You, what, how are they flat footed? Are they bouncers? Are they, you know, right hand, different things like that? But even then, we're still working on our tendencies on how we'll prepare for that and react to it. Now, how is it that you go about selecting the perfect? I won't say perfect, but a good sparring sure. partner. Do you uh, base it on the opponent that they're facing professionally? Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. or is it just you know we just want to get rounds in and just get that work so if if just say if um just say if i'm fighting a mike tyson then i'm looking for somebody that can get as close to that style as possible the same height normally the same weight of, of course it's hard to mimic that power <laughs> No doubt. That's one of a kind. <laughs> <laughs> but at least we can mimic the height, the style, you know, the movement that he would do now. And we can still work on what we have to work on against that. But it's hard to mimic that power at the end of the day. So even with that, we, we're prepping ourselves for our defense. If he moved this way, we're moving like this. You get me? Right. And then, of course, mental, mental reps. So no matter how hard he hit, we got to be try to try to be ready for it. And, and it's not necessarily just Mike Tyson, but that was the analogy. Right. Right. Yeah. Most definitely. And, you know, these are the questions I've always wanted to ask somebody in boxing. You know, I, I, I mean, yeah. they, they, this is just hitting home for me again. Yeah. Coach Relaford with Dream Performance. Now you're bringing this back to Fort Worth. We had a couple of conversations off camera, uh, off the show here on the On Your Mark show. Um, tell me about some of the fighters you're working with. I know there's one guy that you're particular uh, working with that's uh, on the rise right now. I believe he's undefeated, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, he's one of the better, uh, you know, fighters on the come up. Uh-huh. So I was working with uh, Tristan Calcruz, is who you're talking about. So uh, what is he, 19 now? I um, think he's 7-0, and oh, five knockouts, you know. He'll actually be fighting... Um, on that Maurice Hooker card, okay, at the, at the Dickies Arena, you know. So I was working with him. Uh, yeah, uh, I was assisting Ronnie Shields in his day. Okay, you know, so he he's doing real good. And then I have a couple of other guy, uh, a late a female that's getting ready to turn pro, um, Alexis Monis. So she is the first fighter from Fort Worth, male or female to win the National Golden Gloves in 33 years. Wow. Okay. So she finished last year um, ranked number five in the nation. Then I have Nathan Vincent, multi multiple Golden Glove champion, uh, Romello Thomas, Fernando Solis, Sammy Brown. So I got a, a, a good slew of people, you know, Wesley Parker, coming through even in the amateurs. Yeah. Most definitely. Well, that's great, man. And, and I think that what you're doing is great for the uh, You're definitely, you know, entrenched in it. You know exactly mm-hmm. what fighters do. I've seen some of your work uh, with some of the fighters coming up. Uh, what goes into planning, you know, a fight card, uh, you know, as far as travel? How does that work? Uh, you know, how, you know, uh, condensed is that? And how do you keep a fighter mentally ready to get prepared for a fight? What all goes into it leading up until you time you step into the ring? So, man, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a loaded, a lot of question right there. Um, for one, we, we try to let that manager deal with those fight specifics of where we're going and when, right? Um, as the trainer, it's my job to have that fighter ready for when that manager say, hey, we have a fight at this such, such and such day and time. Um, it, man, that, that's a, that's a, it's hard to squeeze a lot into that and, and uh, be very accurate from each role. You get what I'm saying? So I gave you the manager, I'm giving you the trainer. Now, as far as a fighter, my job is to let them do their job and I just want to be able to train. You get what I'm saying? So right. now, even more in more detail, as a coach, I know we're fighting this type of fighter. These are his tendencies. In this such and such round, this is how his body feels. This is what he'll do. Start off this way. He'll break down in this such way. You get what I'm saying? Right. Um, leading up to the fight, you know, you and you want to you now you want me to break down the Day, it's hard to break down the day to day, but that's what you're looking for. Well, just the day to day, give you know, give the listeners sense what goes into it in the background. And, you know, a lot of times we see these documentaries and you know, the cameras following them, uh, you know, but you know, you being in depth in it, you know, you got yeah. sweat dripping, you got everything, yeah, the whole kid and kaboom. Okay, got you. So, even even on just say fight day, 
Fight day. That's good. You you dealing with a lot of fighters would say they're not, but they're dealing with nerves. What am I going to do? How do I need to do it? When am I going to do it? Did I prep enough? You know what I'm saying? Those questions still linger. No, even if you know, hey, I was supposed to run five miles, but I did seven. Even if you know you did extra, you still have something in there like, okay, make a shot. My checklist is good, right? So leading up to the fight, going to the hotel, I mean, to the fight venue, you in the back, you know, waiting on the uh, the commissioners, you know, bring my gloves. We prepping. I'm mentally ready to go. Now I'm suited up, booted up, gloved up, ready to walk to the ring. Even walking to the ring, it's like, okay, did I do this? I got to make sure I'm doing this. You have a thousand questions going through your mind. Once you get in that ring, that first bell ring, all this stuff go out the window. Now I'm zoomed in and focused. If, if he doing this, it's a high speed chess game. You get what I'm saying? So right. it, it's a lot that go into it. So I'm, I'm trying to at least give you a little tinkling. Snippet. Of it. Right, right. You got a little snippet. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that, that's what we're just trying to take the listener into uh -huh. the background. You know, Coach Relliford, you're definitely doing a big thing here. Uh, definitely look forward to more conversations with you uh, on the On Your Mark show in the future. We'll be here if you need us. When you got a fight coming up, you try to bring things back to the Fort Worth area. And that's what we want to spotlight. Now, before we get you out of here, uh, tell us how we can reach you at Dream Performance, where it's located. And also, if you have social medias where people can reach out to you and follow your fighters. Uh, and anything you got coming up here in the future. Okay, so Dream Performance on IG, um, underscore Dream Performance. Um, my handle, of course, you can look me up, Kendrick Relaford, or it's H2H, which is hand to hand comeback. And then I have the uh, REMG Talent IG page. So, All right. Yeah, it, it's pretty, pretty basic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Man, well, well, no, no, no. You got it, man. Again, you're a good friend, yeah. and I'm so glad to catch up with you, man. And been knowing you for probably 10 years or so. And yeah. I appreciate you showing us a little love here on the On Your Mark show. And definitely, we're going to keep in touch and uh, work through some future things here, man. And yes, we're going to take a quick break here on the On Your Mark show, 105.4 RPWP, thepostradio.com. We'll be right back.